So, Dave Sterrett, what's this all about? You know, this was a movement several years ago, Norm Miller, who is um, on the board. He's the chairman of the board of Interstate Battery. He's a very successful businessman. Interstate man. Battery. Yeah, very right. successful businessman yeah. in Dallas. But he's always had a heart for missions. He's always wanted to take the gospel to places around the world. And he's on the board of E3 Partners. And several years ago, he had the idea. He's like, we needed to do a campaign here in Dallas, Texas. This is, he, he called it My Jerusalem. And he says, we need to lift the name of Christ up, but we want to get into the market. He says, if I was to sell batteries and uh, I would have billboards, I would get in the media, and why don't we do something to lift up the name of Jesus that those who don't have the hope of Christ, because there's a lot of people in the city of Dallas, there's churches everywhere, but there are people who have not experienced the love and grace of Christ. Well, let's do something that would kind of get their attention. And so uh, Nathan Sheets and Adam Laydig and uh, Mike Jorgensen, John Humphrey, the, a group came together and uh, founded this movement of called I Am Second. But there's been so many volunteers, other people who have uh, poured in and people began sharing their stories. And some people for the very first time have sat in the chair and they've talked about their brokenness and their hurt and what Christ is doing. And some people are, they're just in the process right now. They're, they're, they're not completely healed, but they've trusted in Jesus and God is bringing healing to their marriage. He's bringing heal, healing to their relationships with their children. And they're finding hope. And that's the message. A lot of these people, some of them were, were well known. Like uh, we had Sam Bradford who was drafted number one mm -hmm. in the NFL. There was, uh, but his uh, slogan was, I was drafted number one, but I'm really second. And so the idea was people who were very successful, some of them were successful in, in their own fields. Josh Hamilton. MVP and, and Major League Baseball. Mm. But he said, no, that, you know, I've hit rock bottom. I'm still struggling, but Christ has given me hope. I'm not number one. Jesus is number one. I'm putting him first. I'm putting others first. And so this message, some people are well known, but others are just ordinary people. And the message is for everybody, a, a wide range, no matter what they're going through, Christ is first and he can help you to put others first and to love them. You, you really uh, have some fascinating testimonials here. I, I love the Josh Hamilton story, of course, because I'm a real sports, sports fan. He's doing very well this year, by the yes. way. Um, Brian Walsh, I'd never heard of before. I mean, here's a guy who's, I mean, he, he's totally tatted up. I mean, mm -hmm. and an outstanding musician. Yes. Um, Brady James, uh, Bethany Hamilton. You mentioned Sam Bradford, Michael W. Smith. Yes. Uh, I mean, some of these, like, you know, there's stories in there. It's like nobody knew that Michael W. Smith had a, a struggle in his early career with cocaine. Yeah. And so he's, he's wanting to share that, yeah, he grew up as a kid wanting to love and music. But when he, early in his career, he kind of drifted from the Lord in the, in the first years before he made it big. And, uh, but there's hope because there's so many other of us who have... Maybe their struggle is not cocaine, but we have maybe, you know, we struggle with envy or, or lust or whatever, and Christ can give, give hope. I, I was really fascinated with the story of the Scruggs. Mm. This is a, a couple who uh, divorced. Yes. Uh, she basically wanted to end it. He didn't want it to mm -hmm. end. They divorced, and then through a very interesting sequence of events, remarried. Yes. I mean, what a, what a story. When you were uh, compiling these... Um, uh, well, not compiling is the wrong word, drawing these people together. Yes. Uh, what was your lead? I mean, how, how did you know who to talk to? Well, I think there was a lot of, you know, a lot of help with that. I think, uh, you know, part of it was the vision uh, of, the, of John Humphrey, of, uh, you know, Curtis Hale, of mm -hmm. Nathan Sheets, Adam Laydig. Mm -hmm. they, they really had that. And then there were people that we tried to get initially. Uh, but they didn't work out. But then other people started sharing their story and approaching us. The idea was to have someone as popular as Dirk Nowinski, who was the popular German basketball mm -hmm. player, and to have the guy from U2. Well, we didn't get them, but we got Josh Hamilton, and we had the guy from Korn, uh, Brian Welch. Head, Head's video was one of the most popular. And then some people who we didn't really expect, they've come and shared their story, and it's been you know, like a top 10 video. Like for example, Shannon was an intern with E3. The person who was going to video canceled. She sat in a chair and started talking about her struggle with her, uh, with her father leaving and all that. Well, it became one of the top 10 most popular videos. I, did I see in the video Mike Huckabee's face? Yes, yes, Huckabee's in there. Now, do you remember what it was he talked about? Well, he talked a little bit about his struggle early on about his wife having cancer. Right. And, and so, uh, 
you know, a lot of times we think these politicians, they have everything together. They're just, you know, going through this. And then he talked about, no, but they go through real struggles. And he also shared about after he lost his election when, you know, he ran for president years ago and mm -hmm. he lost. And what is it like walking after, off that stage knowing that you just lost? What yeah. is that like? You know, we like to rejoice and be around people when they're doing well. But what about in those times of failure? And so Mike shared his story about uh, his, his struggles with that. So now, what's the website for people to access your I videos? Iamsecond.com. Iamsecond.com. That's pretty easy. Yes. And, and you can access all of the videos that you've, that all you've done. All of them for free, yes. Very, very simple, just on a white chair with a light overhead, mm -hmm. just one camera, just talking about their story. Now, speaking of talking about their story, I promised yesterday to follow up on your story. Yes. You're, 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 you're raised in a preacher's home. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you come to faith uh, at what age? Well, I came to faith very early. Right, you mentioned. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Six, seven. Yeah. I didn't quite understand. But it, then, so. and then in your later teens, you kind of waffled right. a bit. A, a little bit. I mean, it was more of my faith in my parents. I never fully turned my back on Christ. I always believed in Him. But when I left home, I went off to this school that had a great basketball team, Oak Hill, and uh, people found out that you know. And you mentioned your Muslim right, I, friends and so on. Yeah. Um, you're 31, right? Yes, sir. I would never say that if you were a girl, but um, what, what what do you think is the state of your generation in terms of, of faith? I mean, mm -hmm. it's an internet generation. You've yes. got so many uh, distractions and yeah. uh, things coming at you like no generation in history. Um, what, what's, what's, what's your sense of faith in, in your generation? Right well, now? it's mixed. I mean, they're on a positive, uh, you know, it, like for, for example, um, where I come from in the United States, the positive is there, there still seems to be people like in Texas who attend church regularly, who believe in Christ with young people. Young people believe more than ever before that one person can make a difference. I'm also involved with the pro-life movement and I've watched incredible things. You know, some of my young friends who are being creative in ideas, for example, having uh, buses that go right up beside uh, abortion clinics and saying, would you like a free sonogram? So this young generation, one of the positive things is that they believe that they can be the generation to see abortion come to an end. That's a very positive. So instead of bullets, they're offering sonograms. Right, sonograms, and then some being creative, you know. I know, like, for example, Lytle Rose and her live action team has gone in and exposed Planned Parenthood. And, and so there are creative young people, I think, um, you know, with my roommate, the Save the Storks, uh, Save the storks? Yeah, say his idea was his marketing <laughs> campaign. Uh, uh, David and Joe, they wanted mm -hmm. to uh, have a sonogram bus, and it was instead of, and it says, save the storks, <laughs> and, and they asked if people would like free sonograms. So, the, you know, those are things that I think are positive about this generation. Mm -hmm. I think on the negative is, one, is they, they're too distracted, like you said. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're not reading as necessarily as much. They're, and some of the technology can be good, but it can also be a distraction, mm -hmm. and so they're lacking sometimes of the convictions of, of, uh, of good reading, of, of reading the whole scriptures, of reading classical literature, and so there are some, you know. Well, there, there's, there's instant gratification with video, right. isn't there? I mean, reading m means you've got to sit down yes. and take hours to get through a book. Uh, and there's maybe a lot of impatience out there because mm -hmm. everything everything else comes instantly. Yes. I mean, if when you're on the website, if, if things don't come up immediately, you get ticked, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you just expect instant on. Um, in terms of uh, what's next, you are a writer and a yes. speaker. Are you uh, thinking about your next project? Well, I'm working on a new pro-life book called Life Chose Me, and these are all types of stories of people, a lot of times uh, a variety of stories about people sharing their pro-life stories, many of them for the first time. We're going to have a website for it as well. And some of these people were, like, for example, conceived in incest, conceived in rape. These are people who have had abortions, but they found hope. These are some people who have worked in abortion clinics, but they're coming out and they're sharing their story of, of, of the darkness they saw and why they changed their mind. Sometimes from a scientific point of view, sometimes they had a spiritual experience and they received Christ's forgiveness. And so it's a, a variety of stories that we hmm. share called Life Chose Me. Well, for a, a young author, you're certainly prolific. This book is called I Am Second, Real Stories Changing Lives. And once again, friends, you can get it on the e-store. Uh, crossroads.ca is the web address or 1-800-265-3100. Why don't you uh, give us a call or log on and order your copy of I Am Second. Dave Starr, thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Been a pleasure. Appreciate we'll be back with more after this, friends.